So let's talk a little bit about some of the tools that foresters use. Um, like I said, we work indoors and outdoors. Um, the tools are different for each, but uh, let's talk about some of the outdoor tools we use when we're out in the field. Um, what foresters are doing out in the field is generally kind of two categories of things. We're either collecting data or we're performing work. Um, that work could be things like um, having a timber sale or doing habitat management, planting trees or cutting trees, or um, it could be collecting data. And we spend a lot of time collecting data. Um, as with any science, our decisions are informed by the data that we collect. So a majority of the job, and that's where the math and science comes in, is the collecting, interpreting, and processing of this data. So when we're out in the field, a lot of what we do is collecting data and information. And here's some of the tools that we use to do that. So notebook, anytime you're collecting data, you need a place to put it. Um, we also collect data digitally on tablets um, and handheld devices sometimes. Um, this is one of the things that a lot of foresters use for a lot is flagging. You'll see this in forestry, fire, surveying, helps us to identify areas of interest and note lines and such. Here's one that we use. Um, it's just a a measuring tape, but this measuring tape is special. It doesn't just measure distance, it also measures diameter of trees. So I can wrap this tape around the circumference of a tree and it's actually calibrated to read me the diameter so that we don't have to do that math in our head. We call this a logger's tape. Here's a hand lens. This is just a magnifying lens. We use this to look at insects, leaves, um, interior of pieces of wood um, to help diagnose problems and uh, determine uh, the health and vigor of trees. Some of the other things we use to collect data. This is called an angle gauge. This is called a prism. Both of them are used for the same thing. It's personal preference, which one you want to use. Um, both of them help us to measure trees when we're sampling. When we're out here collecting data about the forest, there's obviously too many trees for us to measure them all. So we do sampling, just like any other science does. That's where the statistics you'll learn in college come from. Um, we use sampling to determine our entire data set. These tools help us to determine whether or not we count an individual tree in our sample or not. Angle gauge, prism. One of the other tools we use is this tool. It's called a Biltmore stick. It looks a lot like a yard stick, um, but it actually has a different measurement on each edge of it. And it doesn't just have four edges like a regular measuring stick does. This one actually has an extra edge. So each side has a different ruler on and with this we can do things like straight up measure like we would with a yardstick or we can measure tree heights with it or we can measure tree diameters with it. This stick does a lot of different things. It's one of the most important and quintessential forestry tools. We call it the Biltmore stick. A couple others that you might be familiar with. This one is the compass. Everybody's seen or heard of a compass. Compasses are just navigational tools. Um, they help us to make sure that we know what direction we're going in. Um, that's important for a couple different reasons. One, we obviously don't want to get lost. But second, we're collecting statistical data. So it's important that the data that we collect is sound, um, reliable, and repeatable. So when I navigate to a test site, I want that test site to be reproducible. Someone else to be able to find the same site, collect the same same data I do and get the same answer. So we use these navigational tools like the compass to help us make sure we're in the right place. Another tool that we commonly use, this one, called a clinometer. Clinometers measure angles, similar to the way a compass measures angles of direction, a clinometer measures angles of slope. And by measuring those vertical angles and using trigonometry, we can determine the height of trees and or the slope of hills um, with using this tool. Another tool that we use is called the increment borer. 
This is basically a hollow drill. Uh, this tool allows us to drill inside of a tree, pull out the inside that we drilled, and then examine the inside of the tree in that little tray right there. And that tells us a lot of things. We can count the rings to see how old it is. Um, we can look for areas of damage or years of poor growth, things like that. So looking inside of trees is very helpful sometimes. And this increment borer allows us to do that with minimal damage to the tree. Um, one last tool you see here is this vest. All foresters wear vests when they're in the woods. Um, most of them are a bright safety color to help us uh, be seen um, and then to help hold all our tools. By diameter, I would guess this tree is probably close to 50 years old. Pine trees grow pretty quick, but the thing that a lot of people don't find intuitive is that guessing a tree's age by its diameter is much less accurate than measuring, estimating its age by its height. Trees' diameter growth is dependent on tons of factors, sunlight, competition, vigor, health, that sort of thing. Drought. Drought. Um, tree height is generally determined by genes and the quality of the soil it's growing in. So it's a much more reliable indicator of how old a tree is. That being said, with enough experience and in one particular type of forest, you can start to, to make that diameter age correlation. But there's a lot of educated guessing in there. So this is the D tape. It says this tree is 25.1 inches across, even though I'm measuring it around. Around, it's six feet, nine inches. Uh, here's the Biltmore stick. This also measures diameter using trigonometry. I just hold this stick 25 inches from my eye, which happens to be my arm's length and most people's arm's length. I hold it perpendicular to the tree. I side up the left side and the right side, and it'll give me a diameter reading as well. Um, we can also use it for height. I'm gonna pace off one chain from this tree, and I'm gonna use this same stick to measure the height. So I'm using just a different side of this tree now. Um, again, similar thing. I hold it 25 inches from my eye, vertical as I can get, sight the bottom to the bottom and the top to the top, and I can get the height of the tree. I can also get the height of the tree using the clinometer. It does the exact same thing. So I'll look through the clinometer I'll read the bottom. I'll read the top. I sum those two numbers together and the product is the height, roughly 100 feet. So it's going to tell me the diameter of that tree plus or minus two inches. This D-tape is in one-tenth of one inch increments, so much more precise and much faster. I can walk up here and bam, 13 inches. So if speed is your goal and you can do with less accuracy, then this is probably your tool. Um, if accuracy is of the utmost importance and, and time is what it takes, then you would probably use the D-tape. Clinometer has two scales. It has the one chain scale and a hundred foot scale. So it allows you to hit the same measurement from two different points away, one obviously much farther. Um, the farther you are away from the tree, the more accurate that measurement is, particularly with taller trees. So again, the clinometer gives you more accuracy than the stick, but the stick gives you speed.